Hi, everybody. This is Heather Steen, Associate Director at East Suburban Citizen Advocacy. This is our fourth and final presentation within our series of Introduction to the IDD Autism Waiver. So this topic is resources to know. So what we are trying to look at here is if you're new to waiver, um, and even if you've been in waiver for a while, but you feel like you may not know a lot of things about it. Uh, some people get rushed into the system and they don't really get to learn what all is there. We wanted to provide some really helpful resources so that you can reach out and find things or know where to look. So this first resource is the regulations, the 6100s. These are the newest regulations that were just redone and they are still rolling out some of the changes. Um, they're taking steps to make sure that they train and make sure everybody understands the regulations before they make them effective. So some of these are in play and some of them are still being rolled out at this time. Um, I do have the link for you. And why I think this is an important resource for families and individuals is because it's written in a way that, yes, it is hard to understand sometimes if you read through the full document, it's an interpretation a little bit, but you see a path and it's hard to describe, but once you read through it, you'll know what I mean. Um, why it's an important resource is because if you want to get to the root of a rule or someone saying I, you can't because of waiver regulations, then you can look up for yourself um, the resource and find the core of that role. Now, I will say that there are memos and communications, bulletins that supplement the regulations. This helps explain those interpretations or gives you more detail as to what is expected with those regulations. So to stay up to date on those things, you also can join the ODP listserv. Um, just be warned that there are a lot of emails that come out and a lot may not um, correspond with a service that you are interested in. So if your loved one or um, if it's you that receives the waiver, you may not be in a residential program, but you might get reg residential waiver uh, memos as well. So you have to sort through those. But if you go to the website listed there, you can copy and paste it. And there's a button right there that says join listserv that you'll see. You just put in an email address and they'll send those to you. It's a good resource to have not to memorize, not to learn. Um, you don't have to be an expert at it. But if somebody says something about um, a certain area that you're interested in, you can go and look it up. So I think it's very important for you to have the knowledge of where it's at. The next one is the ISP manual. Again, not a resource that you wanna have memorized, but very helpful for a couple reasons. So the ISP manual changes almost yearly, usually around February. The version that is most current as of this presentation is February of 2020. And right now we are recording in April of 2021. Um, this is the link where you can find the current one, but you also can just search in your internet browser, ODP ISP manual, and then check dates when you open the, the document. So the ISP manual explains a lot of the processes that your support coordinator follows. This could be things like um, when they have to come and see you, uh, when their paperwork is due. So some of those things may not be of interest to you, but I believe that one of the most important sections is the service definitions. For families, for individuals receiving waiver, you really should check out this part of the document. It explains what the services are, what's allowed, what's not allowed to be billed for, um, what waiver covers those services, what age groups are covered, all of the ins and outs of the service. So you can read about them in detail and be more informed of what you're asking for and what fits your needs best. But you also can learn about services that you may not be told about. Typically, support coordinators understand what you're looking for and they suggest services. 
But this way you could look through services and maybe find out that some things fit an area that you didn't really consider an issue, but you might be able to get help with. It's a great resource to have. You can always find these online, like I said, by searching the ISP manual ODP and then check, make sure you have the most current one. The provider profiles on ODP um, are helpful. They are a newer resource, um, came out within the last couple years. The link is at the top here. As of March, 2021, this is the website that included information only as current as 2019. So it wasn't updated any more than that. But this resource was created so that ODP could put in one area profiles and information about a provider, um, where they're located, where they do services, types of services that they do, um, what their current ratings are with licensing and monitorings with regulations. So any issues that they've had, how they fixed them, those are all in there. There's a comprehensive report highlighting their strengths, which I find really helpful, as well as what action steps they have taken to fix anything that has been found through monitoring. I would like to see them continue and keep this updated as each cycle goes through with monitoring. But at this time, I think it's been put on the back burner due to COVID and the pandemic. Something to keep an eye on. So this resource is called the HICU. H-C-Q-U, you'll see a lot of times. It's the Healthcare Quality Unit and in Southwestern PA, um, Kepro is the company that provides this service. You can find them at the link um, on the screen, um, www.hcqu.kepro.com. Basically, they offer physical and behavioral health related information that reflects current and accepted standards of care, evidence-based practices, um, effective care strategies, attuned to special detailed needs of people with ID or autism. This information is delivered in the form of trainings, technical assistance. Um, they come out with resources and they'll send you materials. They also have a tool that is called the health risk screening tool where they can look through the screening, ask a lot of questions about health um, and safety, medical conditions, and may see some things that we can do to prevent any further risks um, that are out there for health and safety. This is a process that is actually required when somebody is in a residential site. The residential has to complete the health screening tool um, every so often. I forget, I think it's every year, but do not quote me on that. Um, but they do have to keep those completed and address all concerns. Um, the HICU is a very helpful unit to call out when you feel like there's a variety of medical conditions going on or a lot of medicines or maybe the mixes might be causing issues um, or even if it's just knowledge on a newly diagnosed you know disorder their website is helpful if you can't get them out or you don't want them to come out in, in person or currently on on virtual uh, meetings but you can look on their website for information on many medical conditions, as well as trainings on a lot of topics as well. The Rehabilitation and Community Provider Association is the RCPA. This is a very helpful website when you're looking to stay current with the laws um, that affect our IDD autism community, as well as changes with ODP, our state office. Um, I found this helpful when I was working as, um, as, as a management role in a provider situation, even as the, when I worked at the county at Allegheny County, helping with monitoring. And it's very helpful now to stay up to date as an advocate on what's going on with both of these areas. Um, it discusses policy changes. If you go to the link, it shows you only those areas that are affecting policies with intellectual disabilities or autism. Now, if you look through the rest of their site, it does go into areas of um, mental health and different things. There is a paid portion you can get into, but 
I have been able to utilize the free version of just this policy section um, pretty often throughout the last several years. So another resource you can look at to kind of keep up to date. One of the newer resources, but maybe not newer, maybe more updated resources that we have is our Intensive Behavioral Health Services. This is IBHS, formerly referred to as like wraparound, or you may have heard it as BHRS. So the new BH, I'm sorry, IBHS can help you understand what's needed to begin services for your child. So they've changed the process a little bit where now you can get a script for um, kind of like you do with physical therapy, get a script from your doctor to go get physical therapy. You go there, they do an assessment. They say you'll need six weeks of, you know, um, physical therapy three times a week, and then we step down. So the doctor really just gives you a script to go get physical therapy. Um, the physical therapist is the one that prescribes how much treatment. This is the same for this unit. The IBHS team helps you get linked into a provider if you don't have one um, in mind. They also stay involved with your individual planning meetings or the ISP meetings. Um, they're kind of like case management in a way as well. So if you want to look at their website, it is below. This would be for people under 21, receiving, um, I'm sorry, receiving not waiver, but it's usually through insurance. So again, for the younger population, this is helpful for services with behaviors or in-home and community assistance from staff. Sticking with those who are a little bit younger, our local task force through the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit, number seven, um, they are a, a committee of active parents, community members, educators, um, people in the system with the school system that come together to ensure that all of our children with disabilities in Westmoreland County are receiving supports and services that they should um, in the least restrictive environment. So these meetings take place um, currently virtually, but they used to meet. So you can keep up to date with them. They have a Facebook um, page as well as an email listed here. I also have their phone number, but they would welcome all parents that are looking to be involved. There's usually a speaker about a topic current, um, maybe some kind of a new event, legislation changing or other concerns that seem to be popping up right now with the pandemic. I know there's a lot of concern with the school aged children, um, especially with the ones with disabilities. So we are looking to really utilize this resource, have input from all different angles and come together to kind of work with the schools and parents to figure out how we can help our children the best. So if you have interest in joining, please check out any of the resources below there, get a hold of them. They are great meetings, very informational. And like I said, you can feel like you're part of, you know, um, fixing something, part of a solution. And we also have our Westmoreland Transitional Council. Now they are a group that works with people. Um, their focus, their target audience here is those who are graduating and transitioning into adult life. So they're a network of, again, parents, educators, community service providers that are looking to help them transition into adulthood, into a new life without school. And what do they do? Um, what are you going to do with, with your days? What are you going to do for, you know, if they want to work? Um, different things like that. So they really look to coordinate um, available resources and supports, educating the community about um, disability, but at the same time, finding as many resources for parents and for those graduating so that they can be best informed um, with, with how to proceed after graduation. It can be a scary time. So they're a great group and very helpful if you're in that age bracket. Um, Blackburn Center is a service in our community. I thought I'd look into some of the other areas you might run into. 
and they've been around since 1976. They provide services for victims of domestic and sexual violence, as well as other types of violence and crime in our county of Westmoreland. Um, they look at educating as the community. They do trainings. They do events, fundraisers. So everything is free. Um, it's confidential. If you have a report, you can totally be anonymous. Um, they do have a 24-hour hotline for any emergencies. You can speak to a counselor anytime. The hotline is the 888 number, and you can reach them locally at the 724 number. Speak with the counselor. Um, like I said, everything is free, confidential, and anonymous if you choose for it to be. And they do serve Westmoreland County as a whole. And the website's at the bottom as well at blackburncenter.org. They're a great group. Um, if you unfortunately ever have to deal with something like this, um, they are somebody that I definitely would call for resources, support, and help. And last, I have um, East Suburban Citizen Advocacy. That is us. We are a uh, 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we have been around since 1988. We like to um, focus our time on enhancing the lives of those with developmental disabilities, um, supporting our individuals and in finding advocates in the community or close to them that are already in their lives um, so that they have somebody kind of walking through different processes of life, different stages of life with them to make sure that things, you know, are going the way they should, that their rights are, are being followed and um, you know, they get all of the help that they need as well. We focus on serving unique needs of everybody. We spend time with you, figure out where you're at and what kind of things might help you, link you to community resources um, or groups of people that can help you. And um, advocates are definitely representing the best interests of the person with a disability. Uh, we have a lot of energy, we really are there to make your life better and make sure that, like I said, you are getting treated just as everybody else should be treated. Some of the areas where we provide advocacy, some situations or categories that we have worked in and um, feel comfortable in would be the individual education plan, which is an IEP through um, up through high school. Uh, the IDD Autism Waiver System process, which is what we are doing the series of videos on. The Early Intervention System, um, Abusive Situations, Legal Guardianships, Rep Pays, and Transitional Age Resources are some of the areas where we have worked throughout the last several years in. And we have advocacy efforts and inclusive programming that are always free to those who need them. Our information's at the bottom there and you can reach out to us at any time if you feel you need us. I also wanted to share with you um, before we left a grievance procedure. And this is for, this is specific to the IDD autism waiver. This would not apply to any of the community resources listed in the presentation. So if you are unhappy with a service that you are getting through our IDD autism waiver, feel like you're not being treated fairly or you don't like how it's um, being provided, you, even if you feel like your rights are being violated, um, definitely talk to your provider first, speak to management, let them know what you're dealing with, what your concerns are. If they do not resolve the issue um, that's being discussed, you can ask for a formal grievance procedure. And what this form does is it is a formal recorded documented place where it is the, the com, uh, I'm sorry, the complaint is being documented. So instead of just the discussion and saying, hey, I have this problem, can you help me? you're formally saying, I don't agree with the way this is done and I need you to help me. So they do have a process for that that is through regulations um, that explain how that process needs to go. They have 21 days, I'm sorry, 30 days to establish a resolution. 
If you are not satisfied with that, the supports coordinator is your next step. Bring it to their awareness. Let them know what happened, what um, you're still unhappy with or what isn't working. Um, they have a process as well that goes up the chain to their supervisors and up above if, you, if needed. If you're not happy at the supports coordination level after meetings and finishing their process of grievance procedures, you also could choose to go to the state level. I have number three and four are ways that you could reach the Office of ODP, Office of Developmental Disabilities, I'm sorry, Office of Developmental Programs in our Western region. So you could reach out to them for help and assistance. If you feel this is quite above that level or if it truly gets to um, this point and you're still not happy with how they're handling the situation or you really feel it's more severe um, in nature, you can go to five or six on our list, which is the Bureau of Civil Rights Complaint Department. And this would be more um, if a complaint was against your rights instead of just a service that wasn't being provided correctly or the provider wasn't um, maybe following the regulations. Um, and then there's also Pennsylvania's Human Relations Committee, which again can help you to resolve any situations that you have. So these are just a few of the very important resources through waiver and in our community. There are many more resources that we can help you throughout our, your journey. We re, you can always reach out to East Suburban Citizen Advocacy and your supports coordinator or your service providers for more resources in our county, as there are a lot of them. Um, I have our information there as well, our, face, or our website, our email, as well as our office number. Hope that you find these resources helpful. And if you need anything along the way um, throughout processes, throughout systems, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you.